Welcome back everybody. Today we're going to be looking at another NTI's system, but this time in the engines. What is the engine NTI's system? Why do we need it? Well, when the airplanes are flying along, they can get into conditions where you have ice forming in the front of the engine. The moist, cool air impacting the front of the engine, you can actually have water droplets depositing and freezing on contact on the front of the engine, on the struts, on the inlet, on the nose dome, everything that makes contact with the air as it's uh, coming through. If enough of that ice builds up to a big chunk and then breaks off and gets ingested by the engine, it can cause a lot of damage. To prevent that, the front of the engine has an anti-ice system which prevents the buildup of ice, the formation of ice. And it does that by heating up the front of the engine. And I'm going to show you how it does that. Um, normal engine operation basics, you have the inlet coming in, getting compressed through the different stages as you go through the compressor. The more you compress the air, the temperature goes up. Higher the pressure, the higher the temperature, until you get into the rest of the engine. Um, today we're going to look at where in the engine, the, the NTI's system, it heats up the front of the engine by using that com heated compressor air at the hottest point of the compressor. It's right at the discharge point of the compressor and it blows it through these pipes right here to the front case. As a matter of fact, let me show you exactly the path that it follows. And just so you know what we're looking at, this is again the front of the engine, the compressor, different compressor stages, and we get to right here. This is front of the engine, it is over there. You have the compressor in, in different stages, compressing the air more and more and heating it up as you go until you get to right here and this is the diffuser which further compresses the air before discharging it into the combustors and then the turbines and so on but this right here is the highest pressure that you have in the engine and right here this is a 17th stage of the compressor and right here this tap is taking that air highly compressed very hot air taking that from there tapping it off and coming to this valve this valve is the anti-ice control valve it's controlled by a solenoid which in turn in turn gets controlled by it gets triggered by a switch in the cockpit flip a switch this comes on valve opens now a compressor discharge air comes through and it gets piped through that manifold and it gets split and it goes into <clears throat> the front frame right here where it goes through the struts right here you have the uh, air coming through the struts these struts are hollow so now you have hot air being pumped through the struts heating these up preventing the buildup of ice on these struts from there it continues into the center section into and it flows out through that port right here into the nose dome there's a dome that is not here now it's missing but there there's supposed to be one here that also gets heated by that uh, anti-ice air but this is a closed cavity from here the air gets fed back to the IGVs the inlet guide vanes these are also hollow these are also heated these are not moving these are stationary in the, in, in the sense that they're not rotating with a the compressor. They're, they're stators. They move in the sense that they change the angle of attack. But for all intents and purposes, they're just as stationary as the struts. They don't rotate. Uh, so the hot air comes from the pipes down the struts through the center section, down to here, and up back through the IGVs, and they get out through the trailing edge 
trailing edge is actually perforated and it has little holes all along the trailing edge of the IGVs where the hot air exits and then gets vented back into the compressor. In the process of that airflow, you're taking hot air, heating up, circulating it through the front frame, through all the struts, the nose dome, and heating up all your inlet guide vanes, and then feeding that back to the compressor. Now, something that I didn't mention in this whole piping, and which I think is interesting, and is actually what triggered me to do this video, is this guy right here. This is a flow control valve. This guy here. And this is your, for lack of a better term, your, your thermostat. That regulates how hot you're making that front frame. Because this valve here, you can't, you don't regulate this. This is all or nothing, on or off. When you turn it on, you can actually have so much volume of hot air going to the front frame that you overheat the front of the engine. To prevent that from happening, we have this guy. And the way, the, what I find fascinating is that this is a simple solution. Simple in the sense that it's, it, it, there's nothing electronic, very few moving parts, it's reliable, and it's effective. And I'm going to show you how this works. We're going to take a look inside of this guy. Now we're going to take a look inside of the flow control valve, which is what regulates the temperature of your the front case so you don't overheat any components over there. And the way that controls the temperature is by controlling the flow that it allows through the valve. The more hot air you let through, the hotter that end gets. If you restrict that flow, you're limiting how hot it gets. So you're controlling temperature by controlling how much flow of hot air you allow through here. And what I find fascinating is the simplicity of design of this valve. And the way it works is, I'm going to explain to you a little so that you understand what it is you're looking at in there. It has a metal coil wound up in this direction down the center. That as it heats up, the hotter it gets, it, it, try, it tries to expand and therefore rotates. The, this end of it is fixed. The back end of that coil is attached to some finger veins that turn as that metal expands and contracts. When it turns, it blocks off the path of the airflow, therefore lowering the temperature. As it cools off, it rotates and it opens up again, allowing more flow. And that's dialed to the correct temperature or the desired temperature that you would want in the front of the engine. And this is the inside of that valve. Here's the fixed end of that coil. And inside of there, that is that metal coil. And uh, down at the very end, that star pattern that's your flow control valve. Those are the fingers that actually rotate to limit the flow. As this coil, as that coil right there heats up, it turns those five fingers in the back of the valve over there, blocking off the path of the air. No electrical sensors, no solenoids, no electronic doodads, all mechanical, very few moving parts, robust, simple, very ingenious. that's how that flow control valve works by a simple metal coil that heats up and it turns those five little fingers to open up or close the openings to allow for the flow more flow or less flow 
to regulate the temperature in the, the temperature in the front case of the engine for anti-ice purposes. That is just the way I like it. Plain simple. Alright. See you guys next time. Again, as usual, I hope you like this stuff. If you're watching these videos, you do. I hope you find it as fascinating as I do. Um, I'll keep putting up videos as I come across interesting things that I think you guys might like. Uh, see you next time. If you have any questions, call, uh, shoot them in the comments. Other than that, have a good day. See ya.